can be few sights to rival an English woodland in spring, but add some color from the Orient, and it just gets better. We are at the Royal Horticulture Society's garden at Wesley in Surrey. Between March and June, Battleston Hill is a magnet for visitors. There are collections of camellias, magnolias, rhododendrons, and azaleas, which love Wesley's acid soil. Today's stars are the rhododendrons. There are hundreds of rhododendrons to admire, both evergreen and deciduous, including hardy hybrids, low-growing rhododendron Yakushimanum hybrids, evergreen azaleas, lovely Kurumi azaleas introduced in 1918 by famous plant collector E.H. Wilson, and deciduous azaleas, many of them sweetly scented with lovely autumn foliage. There are more than 1,000 species around the world, and of course now, about 28,000 cultivars. The smallest species rhododendron can be four inches high, and the tallest, rhododendron protistum var giganteum, can be 100 feet tall. Talking of low growing, look at this. One rhododendron wren, and this one is called Grumpy. Oh, Grumpy. I don't mean you, Manoj. Rhododendrons are native to parts of Europe, North American, the Orient, and in particular, China. In China, there are 50% more plant species on a single mountain than we have in the whole of Britain. So they have a fair few rhododendrons. One of the wild rhododendrons, Rhododendron ponticum, has naturalized in Britain and is an invasive pest. Otherwise, rhododendrons are treated with love and respect. My college lecturer, when I was training as a garden designer, Roy Lancaster, is famous for his plant hunting and his love of rhododendrons. He visited China in the 1980s as vice chairman of the Royal Horticultural Society. Rhododendrons rapidly became popular in Britain, and there is a saying that a garden without a rhododendron isn't a garden. The rhododendron is a symbol of lenience, perseverance, and hope. In the heart of the mountains of Yunnan, on the borders of Myanmar, you can find one of the rarest rhododendrons in the world, Rhododendron giganteum. It grows to an amazing height. They call it the king of rhododendrons. It has survived in deep caverns since before the ice ages. They do have some pretty big rhododendrons here too. In the next 50 minutes, we will be taking you to places like Axbury Gardens in Hampshire, learning about famous plant hunter George Forrest, and we will take you to the fabulous rhododendron show in Suzhou. Enjoy signature flowers of China. In Britain, Europe, or North America, there will usually be at least one Chinese plant in every private garden or public park. In China, there are 50% more plant species on one mountain than in the whole British Isles. This is the view of Roy Lancaster one of the UK's most celebrated and best-loved horticulturists. He visited China in the 1980s as vice chairman of the Royal Horticultural Society. The best place to see plants growing is in the wild, where they've always grown, where they want to be, and my very first visit uh, to China was in 1979. So I saw my first rhododendrons, Chinese rhododendrons, wild. Something pleasant happens to you, certainly. You never forget it. Lancaster was not the first Westerner to have marveled at the flowers of China. Since the 17th century, China has been seen as a treasure trove of exotic plants by the Europeans. 
Chinese plants were assimilated rapidly into British horticulture, and the ubiquity of the rhododendron led the saying, a garden without rhododendrons isn't a garden. Beauty is inherited and remolded with the passage of time. The rhododendron is a symbol of lenience, perseverance, and hope. And each blossom creates a pure land that lives beyond time. The Gali Gung Mountains in Yunnan province are where the winds from the Pacific and the Indian Oceans meet and contest with each other day after day. Stretching for 500 kilometers north to south along Yunnan's western border with Myanmar, the climate ranges from tropical to temperate. In the heart of the mountains lives the rhododendron giganteum, an ancient and endangered species. From a tiny seed less than two millimeters long, the rhododendron giganteum can, as its name suggests, grow to an overwhelming height. It is truly the king of rhododendrons. The mountains have deep canyons of mixed forest in which the rhododendron giganteum has survived from before the ice ages. One day, a stranger with blue eyes arrived in nearby Tung Chong. He showed an intense interest in the local flora. Indeed, he busily collected specimens of flowers, fruits, leaves, and seeds of exotic plants. His name was George Forrest, and he was the preeminent plant hunter of his time. In the early years of the 20th century, the rush to discover new plants was big business. Forrest learned the local languages hired a caravan of pack horses, and traveled deep into the mountains. There, he came across the extremely rare rhododendron giganteum. So this is a section of rhododendron that Forrest collected. It's a rhododendron giganteum. No one really believed him how big it was. So in order to prove his point, he went back to where he found the original mm -hmm. trees. And he found this 10 years later in 1931, just to prove how big these trees actually were. Forrest's voyages to China were mainly commissioned by the Royal Botanical Garden in Edinburgh, Scotland. Over 28 years in China, Forrest sent back more than 30,000 dried specimens of plants, more than 1,000 living plants, and 10,000 kinds of seeds. Before that time, 
There had only been about 1,500 plant species in the whole of Britain. If you look at some of his collections that he came back with, the big families um, that he was collecting are the horticultural ones, the things that people wanted to grow in the gardens. Okay, you got it. Some of those were being named his sponsors. So there's a rhododendron, Rothschildii, for example. Um, but also other people were then naming some of those new species and they were naming them after George Forrest himself. So we've got a rhododendron forestii. Forrest's collection enabled horticulturists in Britain to study Asian plants, especially the rhododendrons. Being the first to do so in a European language, they also got the privilege of naming them. Time is the scale measure of evolution. Those plants from China took root in Britain and formed a unique Chinese gradient. Edinburgh is close to sea level, but at a northerly latitude. The mild Atlantic currents that reach Western Europe encourage ideal growing conditions for rhododendrons. Plants may not speak, but clearly express their preferred conditions. For millions of years, the rhododendron, being highly adaptable, has been expanding into new territory. 